Hey everyone, welcome to Sax Spy, where I uncover the best vintage and modern saxophone gear, Vinti and Minty. And today I will be reviewing the Gary Sugal mouthpieces, a couple of the 3D printed ones and a 3D printed metal one. However, as a disclosure, these were sent to me for free, and per my company policy, anything that's sent to me, there is no promise of a review, and if I do choose to review it, uh, it, it will be objective, meaning it's up to me whether I speak good or bad of it based purely on my opinion. Uh, the company does not have any input. The company also does not get to preview any of my review, and they can't change it afterwards. So it is what it is. So let's talk about some of these mouthpieces. I received four of the 3D printed ones. You'll see some other reviewers talked about these mouthpieces, some around Christmas time, and they uh, spoke pretty highly about them, but we'll get to what I think about these. But anyway, there are four 3D printed models, two in yellow and two in white, and then one in their metal type materials, what I'm uh, my research tells me. So let's go over these. If you're looking to hear a review of these, I'm not going to be playtesting these mouthpieces. Um, and let me show you why. I don't plan on putting any of these in my mouth. So this first one here, this is the Stefano Badidi model in a size seven star. Um, this is one of the white mouthpieces. And looking immediately into the chamber, the first thing I see is a massive clump of black lint or dirt or dust and it's kind of stuck into this bubbled up texture on the inside of the mouthpiece. And if I smell the mouthpiece, um, no, it's no. Um, oh, I don't know what it is, but uh, not happening. Anyway, so let's, talk, let's look at the quality of this mouthpiece. There's some other things that I'm not too happy about. Um, and I'm a little disappointed. I was expecting something better based on what I've heard. So looking at the table, it uh, looks like there was an attempt to hand finish it. However, only the right side of the table has these deep, well, maybe surface scratch marks, but they go along the whole length of the table. There's some blue tinted color that's kind of etched in there. But the thing that worries the, me the most is at the end of the table, the sanding and the filing kind of dives and curves down into the shank. And that's that's like a big no-no in, in uh, mouthpiece tables. You don't want the end to curve off the mouthpiece. You want a nice flat finish so your reed has a strict area to sit on. So that's a little worrisome for me. All of these mouthpieces have a rail system that the ligature attaches to, and I've seen this in some other brands, so nothing new. Um, and you can use another ligature around it, but I don't know what level of quality control these have gone through. And I, I'm a little bit worried, but looking at the table, there's a little bit of a, a bubble where the uh, tip rail should be. There's maybe 10 bubbles there. Uh, and then on the right side, it really blends in. So it's not like a real defined tip rail. And I actually see this across all the models. I don't see a distinct uh, tip rail and that's gonna affect the response a lot um, if, if I were to play it, which I'm not. The next thing is the bite plate. And uh, it looks like it's like this blue material with glitter inside and that can be cool but um, it, it's like someone colored outside of the lines and then as they applied the material you can tell it was a liquid and it dripped down and so at the very bottom it's a lot thicker and more dense than it is up top and it's actually below the the cutout it didn't fill the cut up all the way if you look at most mouthpiece makers they will fill up a mouthpiece patch they'll overfill it and then file it down so it's even this was underfilled and so that's a little worrisome for me. So that was the Stefano Badidi in white. I have the same mouthpiece in yellow. And this one also has the bubbly lint texture on the inside. Some of these mouthpieces have fibrous material sticking out of it, but it's, it's kind of like a little furry. This mouthpiece also doesn't have a tip rail. There is some major sanding across the tip of the mouthpiece, which worries me because this doesn't look like it's fine sandpaper. This might be 240 or below. And I know my sandpapers, I make those end plugs. This is, this is pretty rough sandpaper. It just kind of contributes to the unfinished look of these mouthpieces. Moving on to the uh, Sugal MB2 Turbo. We know, ow, one of the little fiber things poked me. There's some yellowish texture. I mean, I don't know why anyone would send this to me knowing I have like a cine camera and some macro lenses, because let's put that on screen right now. Take a look at this. Are you gonna play that? Give you five bucks to play <laughs> no i won't i don't i don't have that kind of cash some real deep fibers on the the edge i'm not too happy about those and some dirt and and dust or whatever it is across the chamber it's 
not looking good. The Yeti, this is the yellow version. Um, some really long fibers, especially in the chamber. It's like a plastic spider lived in here. Um, I know they're not spider webs, but they are like fibrous parts of the um, printing. And, you know, I'd worry about swallowing those or, or something. They just are not pleasant. Um, and there's nothing more uh, that grates me more than this kind of texture. I'm not gonna rub it, but maybe I will, just for you. I don't like that. Another thing about this yellow one that I, I'm not, uh, I can't touch it. Another one about this yellow one is that there's some diagonal speed bump type lines across the table, and they do stick out. Moving on to the metal mouthpiece, this is the Sugal KW3 Plus S. The S stands for sucks, and that's a Strong Bad reference. I was actually um, in one of the Strong Bad emails. He replied to my email. The more you know. It's this supposed metal material that takes about 16 hours to print. There's some sort of like offsetting from the bottom of the build up. You can see about a quarter of an inch on the way the mold got shifted and then shifted back. And so it's, it's like it printed a little askew in some areas. The table isn't as grotesque as some of the others, but there is absolutely no tip rail on this one. The material doesn't seem to be fibrous, seems to be more possibly powder based, but it reminds me of like a potted plant texture. And there's some real strong horizontal lines that go up and down the mouthpiece. You can see the, the different layers. This one has some real apparent sanding across the right side of the mouthpiece. And at the very tip, there's some very rough sanding. It's not even on both sides. Um, it's pretty haphazardly done. So I hope that this review doesn't turn you off from 3D printed mouthpieces or anything that's made in that style. That's not that. Um, I wanna show you three examples of brands that have been doing really well with 3D printing and they're pushing the boundaries further and further and I'm really excited to see the progress. So the first one is, in no particular order, the Geta Sax. And this one is the GS Slant. This one was also sent to me with the same stipulations. This one is like a dental resin. It is 100% infill and it's got a really smooth chamber, a really smooth table because it was hand faced, I believe. And I use that word precisely. The next one is the Windy City Woodwinds 56. This one is hand finished at least. I'm not sure if they're hand faced. I will have to confirm on that one. This one is a really clean mouthpiece. And then the last one, of course, is Sios. This is a white alto mouthpiece that I have. I have some of the other ones as well. Also a clean mouthpiece. This one doesn't have a smooth table like the others, but I will talk about all those mouthpieces in a different video. I just want to show you that 3D printing as a medium, it's, uh, it's just that. It's only a medium and the designs and and the quality control and everything are far more important than the means by which they were shaped. So those are my thoughts on the Gary Sugal 3D printed mouthpieces. I can't recommend these to any of you. Some other channels have reviewed them positively. Uh, take that into consideration. If you like this kind of content, make sure to like this video, subscribe so that you can keep up to date on all of my future videos. Leave a comment down below what you'd like to see next. Keep an eye out for all things Vinti and Minty.